Well, hello there! I hope you're having an amazing day and that you're feeling ready and eager to conquer cargo files. It's time to finally start our discussion about cargo tunnel and cargo lock files. I know you've been waiting for such a long time to get an explanation about these files. So basically, the file that we are interested in is cargo.taml file. That file is also known as a manifest file of our project. It contains a bunch of metadata about our project and dependencies that our project is using as well as their respective versions. Yeah, I almost forgot. Let's discuss the TOML file extension because it's weird. I've never seen it before I started learning Rust. So TOML is short for Tom's Obvious Minimalist Language, which is a kick-ass name, right? It's so awesome. This Tom guy must be some amazing person because he has his personal language named after him. So Tom's main idea was to create a language that is very humanly readable, so very easy to understand and follow through for us, and also at the same time to be very easily translated into data structures of any programming language. Its main idea is to be easily understood by us, and by our computers. Awesome job there! We managed to figure out what TAML file extension is and right now there is only one thing left and that is to continue our discussion about cargo TAML file. So the first thing you want to know about it is the fact that it contains sections inside of it. Yeah, I do not think it's a good idea to continue this discussion like this. Let's head right into Visual Studio Code and let me show it in practice to you. So, now let's open our cargo TAML file inside of our Visual Studio code. And to do that, let's open our previously created 007 example. As you can see, the file is not empty. And believe me, I promise I did not add any of these lines to it. It was pre-added by cargo for us. So, as you can see, we have two sections that already exist. The first one is package and the second one is dependencies. The package section is dedicated to metadata about the project. Aha! I can see you're looking at me a bit pale over there. I'm going to give you an explanation about metadata right away. Yeah, this is the second time I've been using metadata in this video without explaining it. Yeah, that's not very nice of me. Sorry about that. And the explanation is coming right up. Metadata is data about data. Yeah, that's right. That's the official definition about metadata. All clear, right? Yeah, let me, let me try to explain it in a bit more plain way. So metadata in any programming language is supposed to provide us with some additional information about some part of our project. In the given example, metadata inside of cargo TAML file is supposed to give us additional information about the project itself. You'll see all about it when I start my discussion about package section in detail, because when I start talking about its fields, you'll be able to figure out what it means to have metadata and what it actually provides for us. I hope that was useful to you and I managed to explain what metadata is good enough. So, back to you, Marco. Thank you, Marco, for such a nice explanation. Basically, inside of the package section of our cargo TAML file, we have metadata about the project. So, let's talk about the individual fields that we got here from the beginning of creation of our project. The first one is versions. And this one is supposed to specify the current version of our project. So basically, when you potentially release your project, people will be able to see which version of the project they're currently using. The second field we have here is name. And inside of it, you guessed it, we have the name for our project. And as you can see, it's exactly the same as the name that we specified for it while running cargo new command. And finally, we have the addition field. And this one is just basically supposed to tell people 
which year the project was built in. Besides these fields, you can introduce a whole bunch of additional ones, which are going to extend the amount of metadata you have for your project substantially. But it's all going to be useful in some situations and in some it's not going to be. For example, let's add additional description for our project. And to do that, you just start typing descriptions. And as you can see, we get some smart suggestions to make our lives easier while doing it. And that was a short story about package section of our cargo tunnel file. Great job there! We managed to complete our discussion about package section inside of our cargo tunnel file. So right now it's time to start discussing about dependencies section. And this one is a very important part of our project. So pay close attention. Dependencies section is supposed to enable us to list all the external dependencies that we are going to be using inside of our project we're building. Those dependencies are brought to our project from crates.io by default. And if you want to change that, you can do that, but by default it's brought from crates.io because that's the official place from where we get our dependencies and that's where the community uploads their projects and libraries for us to browse through. Well, alrighty then, now the only thing left is for us to define the way you would actually include some dependencies in your project. So to discuss syntax, I think it's the best approach to go right into Visual Studio Code and see it in practice. So now we are back in our Hello World project, but this one is not the one that we were working with before. I created a new one entirely behind the scenes. So as you can see, inside of the project, we still do not have cargo lock file. That means that I did not build the project even once. So if we open cargo tunnel file, you can see that we have the exact same setup as the previous time. That's because everything is pre-generated by cargo for us. Okay, now let's run cargo build command. And after we have done that, you can see that cargo lock file was generated. As you can see, there is not much going on inside of the cargo lock file. There is some basic info about our project, such as name and version, and that's basically all. So now, to make things a bit more interesting, let's go back to cargo tunnel file and add one dependency to it. That way you will see how to format it and you will know how to do it. So the first thing that goes is the name of the library without any quotation marks or anything, just the name and then equals and then inside of the double quotes you enter the version of the library you want to use. In this case, I do not know the exact version of time library that I want to use, but I do know that the current version is 0 0.0 something something something, but that's all I know. So I'm going to add this notation you see here with this like weird triangle like symbol and 0. That means that Cargo will search for the latest version that starts with 0 for this library and it will fetch it for us. But let me show you that. And now inside of our terminal, you can see that something is going on. We have some downloads happening. We see some compilations happening, but there is more than a single library that's being downloaded. That there is not just time library. We specified just time library. And the explanation is very simple. Each library is also a project that was created in Rust. And for it, there was a cargo tunnel file. And inside of it, there were probably some dependencies. And for our case and time library, we had a couple of dependencies inside of it. Cargo for our project is going to check for all the dependencies for the library that we are including. So we do not have to worry about that and we do not have to include those libraries manually as well. Cargo will do that for us, thus making our lives much easier. But now let me show you something very interesting here. Let me run cargo build command again. You will see that nothing is going on. 
We are not downloading the libraries again. We are not compiling them. There is nothing happening. Why is this the case? Well, because Cargo is smart. It figured out that we are still using the same version of Time Library and that it already has it downloaded and all of its external dependencies and it doesn't have to do anything basically. We, it already contains all the data it needs. So we do not have to do anything here. That is why it just compiled the project again and told us that everything went well. But let's go to cargo lock file again and see did anything change there? And the answer is it did. And there were quite a few changes that were introduced here. First, for our main package, you can see that it now does not only contain name and version fields, it also contains dependency field. And inside of it, a single dependency called time, because we included a single external library, which was called time. But also, that's not all. We also have external package, which is called time. And for it, we have external dependencies. We have two in this case. You can see them listed here. So basically, for all the external libraries that we include, we get additional entries which contain name, version, and dependencies inside of them too. Awesome job there! But I want to cover a single thing, so we're not done here yet. Do you remember our discussion from the previous video about cargo fetch command? You remember it, right? We did not cover it in depth because I said we needed to introduce some additional stuff and we are not still ready for it. But right now, I would say that we are. Let me show you what cargo fetch command does for us. So to show you, I need to introduce another external library inside of our cargo TAML file. I'm going to use rand library because it's a very common library and I'm just going to include it here. And when I run cargo fetch here, we can see that something did happen. Let me show you what exactly happened in the background, actually. Let's open cargo lock file and let's search for rand library and see if it's included here. Oh, it doesn't seem to be here. Yeah, it's on the top. I, I almost got confused there because I knew that it was supposed to be here, but it was not. But here it is. And as you can see, we got rand library included in our cargo log file for us after running cargo fetch command. So basically cargo fetch will do the job of downloading and preparing all the dependencies our project needs. And there you have it. Now you know what cargo fetch does for us. Awesome job. Now I think you have a very solid understanding about cargo TAML and cargo log files. If you do not agree with me, you can always share your opinions or questions in the comment section down below this video. I'll gladly try to answer them all. Welcome back. I would like to use this moment right now to say one thing to you, and that is that I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you because you're still here and learning about Rust with me. I'm saying this because I know how difficult it is to master a new programming language, even more so when that language is so intense as Rust is. That is why I wanted to use this moment right now to thank you for being here with me and to congratulate you on the fact that you are still here and going through these videos. <laughs> so now that I shared how I feel about this, it is time to talk about our next video. So, in our next video, we're going to be talking about ways to include multiple binaries into our project. So, there is only one thing left. I wish you an amazing day and goodbye.